this is the stone number one and it seems like actually one of the biggest if you look at it it has a shape here like a chair and uh, it is mythical let me try to sit on it <laughs> So it is mythical, they say some people would sit here and be, believe for a miracle. Remember the whole of Avery Stone uh, Circle is very spiritual. Hello Karakioi family, I want to welcome you to today's video where we will be talking about historical uh, some of the heritage in the UK we are going to be looking at the Avery uh, stone circle this is uh, an area whereby it's very historical here in Avery Avery is in Wiltshire here in the UK and the stones that are right behind here on me and the whole of this it's like circular place where we have historical moments and even looking at it it's very trusted uh, heritage for people here in New England and it is the biggest stone circle in the whole world so there's a great interest when it comes to history and it has been retained so that people can be able to hear and even to learn about the history so many people visit here to just come and understand and be able to hear and uh, we have a, a UK um, national trust that preserves it and helps to give people direction and even to help them to understand the heritage and to tour. Mm -hmm. How did the rock start? These rocks started from uh, the. It, it's covered by. It was covered by rocks like 4,600 years ago. <laughs> yes, that long. They started breaking the stones. They moved them into some few various spots like here and some other places you'll be seeing from the photos. And they were moving them using sledges because definitely uh, at that time we didn't have machinery like we have now. So they would tie the rocks after chiseling them. You know they chisel using a chisel. So they would uh, cut them and break them down and move them to various spots here in every circle. Uh, they were using the sledges like they tie strings onto the stones and push them put them on the sledge and move them forward to different areas so the area is basically historical and um, also spiritual because even listening to the stories here it's it's about uh the pagans and um people who uh, worship and believe in the sun and the sky environment they preserve this place because they they believed even just looking at these rocks you know the dynamics of the earth they, it used to uh, bring them uh, the worship you know and uh, the sun for example even that is why twice a year in at the end of summer and at the end of winter you know when the sun is changing into longer days for summer and shorter days for winter we have many people who come here pagan especially who come here to worship and to have their day like i was being told by uh, the visit workers those people who help people to understand they are volunteers who help with the national trust that has preserved such uh, heritages here in the uk so one of the visit worker was telling me this year on june 22nd we had uh, over 4,000 congregated on this ground you know uh, who are pagans just to come and bring their uh, worship of the uh, end of winter when we are now beginning summer here in the uk and they, I, I wish it was a moment i think next time i would like just to come and see that culture it's something new to me but they just come here to worship so it's very spiritual to people who are, are pagans but also it's a ground that even christians people from different faiths can just come and worship and they have various spots and various stones that they believe they can be able to just be on those stones and uh you know many historical uh aspects of faith when you listen to that so this is an area where uh, when you come you'll see the history and the dedication because we have even they have tried to maintain the the grounds they are very well maintained they even have uh nearby farms that have sheep so they come and release the, they come and release the sheep 
on the ground so that they can be able to uh, feed on the ground like now we have sheep on this side that uh, is part of what is allowed they come I was asking who brings this sheep here are they allowed and they said yes it is official and it is allowed for them to just come help with uh, keeping the grass short it's lovely actually even just saying that some of the things that they do also to maintain the ground the national trust has allowed uh neighboring farm farmers for example we have uh, those ones who wear the sheep as you can see they normally come bring the sheep uh to graze on this ground uh because it is like a mile circular place so they bring them around to keep the grass short and i thought that was very creative because it means they can be able to at no cost <laughs> to keep the grass down so that people can continue to enjoy uh because families come visitors come sometimes stories come so i was wondering what keeps the grass short and they say yeah that's the way that they do to encourage people to be able to bring their sheep here uh, from the nearby farms because every area is uh, like uh, we have farms around it here in wheelchair and uh, they're able to bring them to come and graze on here on this side of the every stone hedge or stone circle they have tried to name the stones uh, by giving them numbers and from the visitor walker we were being told that uh, this is the stone number one and it seems like actually one of the biggest if you look at it it has a shape here like a chair and uh, it is mythical let me try to sit on it <laughs> So it is mythical, they say some people would sit here and be, believe for a miracle. Remember the whole of every stone uh, circle is very spiritual and it was connecting people at that time because they they had many things they were worshipping. They would worship the sun, they would worship the earth, they would worship the environment. So they believe that when you're sitting here, you would connect maybe to your spirit and maybe if you want encouragement or if you want uh, just the goodness, whatever it was. So it is a chair, kind of a chair, and this is the stone number one. And all the other stones have been given numbers. So. The last one here in this circle is stone number 99 and this is the one, this one here, this, this is the one that is given 99 and then this was the alley where they used to pass, it was a road, they are saying that it was a road and people as they are coming with their families, with their children, with their dogs, just to come and have fun. Yeah, so here it used to be a road that used to connect uphill and all the way down. And that is why they decided this rock here to be rock number one. And it seems like the biggest stone. And then we have stone number 99. They demarcated it by being on this side. And then there's this big tree here that brings even all the beauty all the beauty of this area yeah that's a tree it's very huge and very beautiful yeah so the main road now actually connects the nearest towns which are from this circle it connects the nearest villages now and if you look at uphill from where the stones are you can see we have a, a great kind of a farm area that is up the hill it's a lovely place to be Looking at these rocks now, there is this footpath that has been prepared and uh, yeah, it's an alley to make, take me round up the small hill to be able to go round the every stone um, circle whereby I'll be able to see the other side of the, this area. It's like a one mile kind of a strength. Uh, you can see the beauty of the trees as I go up and then it's a definitely man-made uh, staircase can see the wood on it and uh, yeah so it helps us to go up and down as we climb going on to the other side to see what is happening and then there's this small valley here and this is part of what was being done this is where the rocks were being picked from and it gave this shape as they were being taken down and they planted right behind me those big stones and it, it gives out all the beauty of this every stone circle oh so I'm going up now yeah, but it's a nice walk, an adventure for those ones who love adventure, it's one of the heritage in the UK.
so these every uh, stones they were carved out from the soil the soil formation because it's a clay a soil with a clay soil that is why it's whitish kind that is what they say and it was being uh hit with um i mean it was just heated up and broken into small pieces and pulled down using the sledges and deposited in this area which makes it very historical and it's the biggest actually the biggest stone head or stone circle in the whole world that is where there is interest with the uh, unesco so they are part of uh people who uh, in the united nations help with uh um maintaining the trust and nature and such things so even if they wanted to do any more maybe disembarking or going through to bring more stones from the ground it's now controlled by many other interested parties not like there before over 4600 years ago when they were able to break and burn it now the visit walker or the one who was uh, giving us the tour guide said, that uh, currently they're not able to do that because now it's more protected. There'll be more, maybe it will even be more expensive because many people are interested. They have to pay for so many things. So that is why whatever now stones that they have, they have to maintain it. But these stones, big stones, were not the only ones. If you look in one of the buildings, like down there, they were trying even, even the fence that is uh, done for the buildings is uh one of the buildings we can see it is rocks literally just chiseled out and has made uh buildings that is surrounding this the um every circle and even a few uh, fences that they had started but they said when the architecture had started it was stopped so it didn't go on for so long then we have farms we have farms like the way we, we saw the sheep that are helping to cut the grass definitely by grazing on the grass. It keeps the compounds good. So the farms are surrounding these uh, every circle, a stone circle. We have many farms around here and it is, this is what they call a village. I know this is an English village. <laughs> I feel like uh, with the typical mind of an African, our villages could be seemingly different maybe even very different houses and maybe with uh, signs of lack or maybe not very good roads. Now, this being a village, it doesn't even maybe feel like a village, but they describe it as a village because maybe it's in the countryside and a few houses are there. So yeah, this is every village and uh, we are touring, we are getting to see one of the historical heritages of the UK. When you get a chance, come to Avery, it is in Beecher County, lovely. So another area in here at the Avery Stone Circle, we have this is called a wish tree, whereby people started off by coming to put on their wishes. And if you see, we will be having ribbons. You don't have even maybe just to say what you want. You can put on a ribbon and represent your wish. Maybe, oh, <laughs> may God prosper me. May God uh, give me peace. May God heal me. Hey, I would like to be a rich woman. <laughs> Whatever wish that you have, so you just come and put it on these trees, or you can come even and put it on the ground, on the roots of this tree. If you look at it, the roots are really sprouting. When walking here, you have to be very careful. And then you have the various colors. This one decided to put the yellow, some are putting red. So this is just a wish tree where people just come and uh, peg in uh their wishes and uh how they their desires uh because we say on this ground also it's very spiritually connecting people uh come with uh like part of worship yeah and uh the indigenous ones used to how it's all started they used to come and worship here and uh the allegiance was to the sky maybe to the sun for environment that is how uh, at that time the paganism was connecting so yeah so you can see different colors that are on the on the tree and even some are put on the roots of the floor on the ground rather on the ground yeah so it's called the wish tree here at every uh stone circle continuing just to enjoy the heritage and uh yeah the happiness yeah so yeah we keep on enjoying and touring and uh watching out for the heritage it is uh, very important and it's it's amazing this is the wish tree
So yeah, we are coming to the end of our, our one mile walk, whereby we were walking at the every stone circle. This is a stone hedge where it is a very historical, it's a neolithic, like it is one of the known heritage uh, stone circles and the biggest in the world. It is here in UK. We couldn't even finish the entire, but we've done the circle itself of one, one mile. It's in every village. Every village is in Wisha County in the UK. So this is the end as you exit, because they used to have the road. So as you exit, that is the, the exit. Like this is the road where it brings us back to, to complete our circle. And this is one of the biggest as well stones that we've been able to see here. Whereby if you remember, it's these stones were brought here using the sledge and they were being chiseled from the ground whereby the ground is made up of clay heated up and they were chiseled and now they become very monumental and uh, heritage for the country of uh, for here in england and it is now even being uh, preserved by the national trust national trust usually preserve the heritage of uk whereby they have staff they have volunteers they have people who are interested to preserve this so we also have the uh, UNESCO that has helped to preserve this so this is the ground it is well preserved also the ground if you look at the ground it is well preserved we don't have grass we have farmers who have been allowed to be bringing their sheep here to come and uh, graze in this area so that the grass can be kept low and so that the grass uh, the area can be conducive because we have tourists who come also from other parts of the country or other parts of the world to come and see this uh, magnificent uh, every stone um, circle. We even have students who come here to learn about the history of their country. It's a very interesting one. If you've never been here, please come to Wisha Council at Avery Al and you'll be able to see this. I've enjoyed my one mile walk, being able to just go. We have seen the wish tree, whereby wish tree is one of the areas the people used to go there and it's still people go to put on their tags or their wishes or to, to pray. We have also seen an area where it's a center uh, where people use pagans go there to worship and connect with the sun, connect with the uh, earth and connect with the environment because that is how they worship and we've seen two of the major days that are very important it's end of the summer and the begin end of winter this is where we have the long days and long uh and short days because they believe at that time the sun is changing because of the season of summer and winter and it's one of the they worship the sun so pagans do combine here we've seen that this year they came over 2000 or in june to come and uh the crossover of winter and summer spring winter coming to summer whereby we, they were welcoming the long days here in summer so welcome anytime when you're around come and watch we've been glad i hope you've enjoyed please comment like our videos continue with these conversations in the comments remember you are part of our family if you're a subscriber keep on subscribing sharing our videos if you haven't please subscribe if you find this video interesting because get karaoke moments this is where we discuss life conversations because we believe life is a journey walking in part of it to enjoy this life is traveling to see what is happening and today we were talking about the avery um avery stone sack showing these indigenous stones that are rocks they are bold as they are big till we see you again god bless you thank you